This bridge is the start point for some of the best sprint finishes the short track has ever seen. You don't even need to look too far back. 2018, Sam Gaze and Mathieu van der Poel. 2020, Pauline Franfrevo versus Evie Richards. Or 2021, Mathieu van der Poel again versus Tom Pidcock. And whilst in the third round of the UCI Mercedes-Benz Cross Country World Cup, we have had a bit of a course change. One thing remains certain, this tarmac is set for a showdown. Round three of the Mercedes-Benz UCI Cross Country World Cup began in the iconic venue of Novia Mesta Namorave in the Czech Republic. Friday's short track was a completely new challenge for the athletes with a brand new course for 2022. And here we go then, Rebecca McConnell there with the yellow on her shoulders, a good start from her, Laura Stinger in the white goes as well. The crowds returning for the first time since 2019 were to witness a spectacle in women's cross country racing. It was French rider Luana Lecomte that showed early intent and upped the pace to test the 40 strong field over the first few laps. Australian Rebecca McConnell, who also looked strong from the start of the race, took the initiative in the seventh lap with a powerful move to the front. Lecomte, Yolanda Neff and Prevost right on her wheel. Rebecca McConnell now out front and Luana trying to go with her. Alessandra Keller, Sina Fry, Jenny Risfeds and Anna Terpstra did manage to bridge the gap slightly between the front three, but it was energy sapping as McConnell took control. So an attack from Rebecca McConnell. Oh, it's all out for the Australian. Naff McConnell. Naff is looking really good. If you start sprinting too early, a lot of advantages for the riders behind you. But Nep had judged her move to perfection, having enough energy in reserve to lock horns with the Australian coming into the final climb. Oh, this is going to be a massive group sprint. If anyone's got anything left, you'll have the Nep sat down attacking. Rebecca McConnell now trying to go with her as well. Jenny Reese been there in third. So Rebecca McConnell launches an attack. She sprints for the line. Who's it going to be? A photo finish deciding an unbelievable short track race, which could have gone to any one of nine riders coming into that final turn. But Yolanda Neff takes the World Cup win, followed by the valiant Rebecca McConnell. Jenny Risfeds using every ounce of energy to pip Cena Fry to third, and Loana Lecomte completing the top five. Oh, that was just amazing. It was just perfect. Uh, it couldn't have been any better. I honestly, even going up that grass hill, I thought the whole time somebody's going to pass me. And then I came on the top of the tarmac and it was still in front and I was like, okay, I'm going to sprint now. <laughs> so, yeah, I had like the perfect position and then, yeah, I, I won. It's amazing. My goal today was to do a top eight to be again on the front road on Sunday. And yeah, I just was like, well, I have to have a go because I don't want to again leave it to a sprint. And um, yeah, I'm unbelievably happy with the second place. A super race and huge congratulations to Yolanda Neff and Rebecca McConnell especially. But just look at how tight it was, with just three seconds separating the top seven riders. A special mention must go to Gwendolyn Gibson with her best ever elite finish in only her fifth race. Pauline Ferran Prevost's retirement due to a snap chain in lap eight and Rebecca McConnell's second place means that the Australian now has the short track leader's jersey as well as the overall leader's jersey. South Africa's Alan Hatherley arrived in the Czech Republic on top of the XCC overall. Nino Schurter celebrated his birthday on the day of the race. The 36-year-old, the most successful athlete over the longer distance here, with five World Cup wins. In 2021, Tom Pidcock was narrowly beaten by the now absent Matthew van der Poel. The Briton, now one of the favourites following his dominant win in Albstadt Cross Country Olympic race. And we get going in Novi and Mesto then, all out on down the tarmac, but he's managed like a drag race for the first turn. Schurter in the middle, going hard, happily with him. Luca Schwarzbauer hit the front on the start lap, but soon the field got back together. Things were constantly changing up front. It was the turn of Spain's David Valera Serrano. Before Italy's Gerhard Kirschbaumer reappeared on the front of a World Cup race, late in the lap after starting in position 38 out of 40. 
On to lap four, and a crash took out the overall leader, Alan Haverley. The field slowed down and bunched up again in the ensuing laps as they prepared for the sprint to come. And with three laps to go, Alan Haverley was back in contention after his misfortune. Tom Pidcock finally appeared as part of the leading group as they started lap nine. The Brit in touching distance as they headed into the penultimate lap, fifth for his efforts. Fascinating race, there's Nino. Abensini right in front of him. Sebastian Finney there as well. Filippo Colombo took up the mantle, skimming the table before the pace lifted onto the final lap. The German led them into the final sprint, a group of three. No one can go with this German rider. Schwarzbauer is riding away with it. Enough for this, though. Schwarzbauer wins his first short track World Cup. Incredible. It's crazy, I'm so breathless, not only because of the hard sprint, but uh, also because I can't believe I just won a World Cup. I mean, it's a short track World Cup, so it's a World Cup race. A new name then appears on the XCC World Cup winners list, the first World Cup win for Germany since Mike Klug in 1993. Tom Pitcock and Filippo Colombo followed behind with a notable fifth from short track world champion Christopher Blevins. So the amiable German now moved top of the XCC standings, taking the leader's jersey for Lea Gang. Seven nations fill the top ten as Christopher Blevins appears for the first time. 207 points from Matthias Flukiger to the new leader and all to play for after three rounds. Novia Mesto Namorave always delivers on a sprint finish, doesn't it? Yolanda Neff seemingly back to her best and Rebecca McConnell claiming yet another leader's jersey. And what about Lucas Schwalbswaller? That was an unbelievable performance. We saw a taste of what he could do in Albstadt, but he really put it together today. Definitely one to keep an eye on for the future. And speaking of future, well, Sunday we have an Olympic distance race to prepare for, so we'll see you then.